The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has arisen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from a tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, mother, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know if you're at all like me, but when I was a kid and beyond that for some time, I used to worry a lot about whether I would really make it, whether I would ever get to heaven, whether all my sins could be forgiven. But I don't know if you heard the first words we said tonight when we were in front of the rectory blessing the Easter candle or before we did that, we said, if we keep the memorial of the Lord's death and resurrection, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we may be confident of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. We may be confident. We don't have to worry. We know that as long as we try to follow Jesus and have this relationship with him, we will make it. He is with us. He is always with us. Now, this evening, we celebrated these mysteries that we're talking about here. We went into the darkness and blessed the light. The Easter candle represents Jesus risen from the dead, the light of the world. We carried that light into church, and as you came in and lit your candles, you lit up the whole church. Sometimes we need to light up the church because sometimes the church is in darkness. You lit it up, and I must confess that the view from up here is a lot better than down there because all your smiling faces are lit with the fire that you're carrying, the fire of Christ, and it's marvelous to behold. And then we celebrated some of the high points of God in human history, starting with creation, how God created this wonderful world and then he created us human beings to enjoy this world and to protect it so it would endure forever or as long as he wants. And we celebrated the fact that God freed his people and led them through the sea and destroyed the enemy behind them so that they could now be free. And finally, we read in the gospel how Jesus, after his life was finished and was buried, some of his disciples went to the tomb and found emptiness and were very surprised. And the tomb was empty because now he lives in us. We're about to celebrate the fact that three new people will enter that watery tomb that we call a baptismal font in the back of church. And they will be buried with Jesus. They will be immersed under the water as in a watery tomb. And then they will rise to new life. From that point on, Jesus will live within them as he lives within us. And they will develop further this relationship they have with him so that someday they too will meet him in their heavenly home. And eight other people will renew their baptism. No, five other people will renew their baptism in the waters of baptism, and we ask you all to do the same. 
and then they will all, eight will come forward and be confirmed. This is a marvelous night when we celebrate new life, new joy. But before we go to the waters of baptism, or after we go to the waters of baptism, we will gather around the table to be nourished once again with Jesus' body and blood to strengthen us on our journey through this kingdom, to his kingdom up there. But first we call upon the saints who have made the pilgrimage and have completed the journey to be special protectors for those coming into the church and for us all. Now I will enter the waters of baptism and invite people one by one to join me. Father Jay, may I present to you and to our community Alicia Lowry for the Sacrament of Baptism. Father Jay, may I present to you and to our community Danielle Johnson for the Sacrament of Baptism. Father Jay, may I present to you and to our community, Joe Davis for the Sacrament of Baptism. You have all been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. By your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought and under guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to profess the Catholic faith in this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of our Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. And so I have one question for you who are already baptized and are coming now into the church, and your a good response would be yes. Do you believe and profess what the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and pro proclaims to be revealed by God? Yes. Very good. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. And now, my dear candidates for confirmation, that is all eight of you, by your baptism, you have been reborn in Christ and have become members of Christ and his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon the apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. He will strengthen, it will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. And so, my dear friends, let us pray to God, our Father, 
that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation and strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. If you would, please extend your hand with me over all of them, you as priests. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and of courage, the spirit of knowledge and of reverence. Fill them with a spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 